30th October year 2000, in the front cover of Time magazine, we have seen this big headline. And it is saying why girls are growing up faster. That means this is a case of early puberty. In this generation, in the 21st century, boys and girls are growing up faster as they used to be in the 19th century. In the 19th century, the mean age of attaining puberty was 16 to 17. But in this generation, in the 21st century, we are attaining puberty at a much earlier age. As here in the front cover, you can see that here it is given that is it hormone or is it the fat the body is accumulating in this generation? Or is it something in the water that is responsible for this early changes in the body? early reproductive changes so first we need to know what is puberty then we will understand what are the pubertal changes and the factors that are responsible for those changes in our body so welcome to the first lecture of human reproduction a very interesting topic and by the end of this lecture you should be very clear about this four topic let's see what are the four topics about puberty about the onset of puberty what are the changes that occurs in the body and what factors regulates those changes and in this lecture we will understand the male reproductive system anatomy the physiology part the physiology of male reproductive system that is the process of formation of sperm and all those hormonal things we'll see in lecture number three of this series so do not skip Continue for the next one hour. The term puberty is derived from the Latin word pubescere, which means to reach physical maturity, growth of body hair and attain manhood. Now, puberty represents that age or the stage of transition when a sexually immature boy or girl is changing into a potentially fertile adolescent. Now, what is adolescent? This term will come just now only so puberty represents that stage when a sexually immature girl or boy is transitioning from from that immature state to a mature state now puberty is defined as the developmental time period during which secondary sexual characteristics appear and a child progresses from a sexually immature to sexually mature state so so it is that stage when sexual secondary sexual characters are appearing in the body now what are secondary sexual characters that also i'll come in the later slides now see the start of puberty is controlled by hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis now hypothalamus one of the important part of our brain then pituitary gland and then gonads so in case of males we'll see the gonads are uh, testes in case of female the gonads are ovary so what happens that due to the activation of hypothalamic pituitary and gonadal axis now it's not uh, like that that this axis was inactive before that before that this axis was active also but what happens during puberty that there is pulsatile increase in the secretion of some hormone so for now we are having two terms in our hand which we need to understand in the later on so one of the term was what is adolescence and now we are having another term that it is hypothalamic pituitary gonadal x now this two term i'll come to that later on okay now both the hpg means hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis and hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis so another name hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis these are the neuroendocrine system that play a key role in normal puberty so for the uh, development of normal puberty this two hormonal system or we can call it neuroendocrine so it is associated with brain so neuroendocrine systems are very much necessary so the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis is controlled by feedback mechanisms which evolve early in life so this axis develops very early in the life we'll see that and this axis is responsible for the onset of true puberty via pulsatile gnrh release now pulsatile gnrh release another term 
so there are some terms accumulating and there is subsequent rise in luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulation or follicle stimulating hormone so let's unfold these terms without keeping much suspense here so what is adolescence what is adolescence adolescence is the time period adolescence refers to the time period when or is the is actually the time period between between puberty and complete sexual maturity complete sexual maturity so puberty and complete sexual maturity what was puberty in our last slide we have seen puberty is the is defined as the developmental time period during which secondary sexual characters appear so just appearance of secondary sexual characters in a boy or in a girl from that time to attainment of complete sexual maturity that period is the adolescent period so in the adolescent period what happens there is very high rate of body growth so starting from so adolescent period starts adolescent period starts from the appearance of secondary sexual characters so the appearance of secondary sexual characters to it ends when the uh, general body growth slows down because after puberty what happens that there is very high rate of body growth there is high rate of physical body growth so there was high rate of body growth and when this body growth slows down this ends the adolescent period and the average age of adolescence in case of boys is 12 to 20 years whereas in case of girls it is 10 to 18 years so there is a two year or one to two year uh, late onset of puberty in case of boys so so this is an average value so now you know what is uh, puberty and what is adolescence now let's go back to our slide of puberty where we have seen that both hypothalamic pituitary and gonadal axis and hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis so these are the two different axis of neuroendocrine system which are responsible for the normal puberty now we need to know that this hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis controls adrenarche so what is adrenarche adrenarche is the increase in adrenal androgen production beginning in mid to late childhood so starting from 6th to 7th year there is a production of more and more sex steroids from the adrenal gland and that increase in the adrenal sex steroidal hormones is called adrenarche so adrenarche is not a true puberty as you can see here adrenarche though independently not true puberty but it triggers something and it triggers the development of secondary sexual characters so the secondary sexual character is triggered earlier or some time before puberty and it is not a true puberty but during that time there is development of pubic and axillary hair in males and females now we are having two terms in our hand that i need to explain to you one is hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis that is uh, hpg that is denoted here another is hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis so what are these two endocrine mechanism let's just recapitulate some concepts from endocrine system so hypothalamus is just a part of brain or specifically forebrain now this hypothalamus is a part of diencephalon so in the forebrain another one of the part is called diencephalon so hypothalamus is a part of diencephalon 
so hypothalamus is actually uh, consisting of neurons as it, as it is a part of brain so it consists of many neuron so consists of many different neurons so as a part of brain it is consisting of neurons but among those neurons there are specific type of neurons called gnrh secreting neurons so in hypothalamus there is some neurons called gnrh neurons so there are some neurons which are secreting a chemical into the blood circulation and the name of that chemical is gonadotropin releasing hormone so gonadotropin releasing hormone these are some chemical secreted by hypothalamus into the blood circulation now this gonadotropin releasing hormone reaches this hormone reaches pituitary gland through blood circulation and from that pituitary gland this uh, hormone actually stimulates pituitary gland to secrete it stimulates pituitary gland to secrete some other hormone called fsh and lh so fsh and lh both the hormone are acting on the gonads gonads are the primary reproductive organ of our body so what do we mean by primary reproductive organ and what do we mean by secondary reproductive organ so let's define what is primary reproductive organ so primary reproductive organ is that organ of our body where gametes are formed so primary reproductive organ is that organ in our body which produces gamete and secretes sex hormone so there are two important property of primary reproductive organ primary reproductive organ produces gamete and primary reproductive organ secretes sex hormone whereas the secondary reproductive organs they neither produces gamete nor secretes sex hormone so what are the role of secondary reproductive organ so the secondary reproductive organ the role is limited to conduction of gametes so they are responsible for conduction of gametes so this organ neither produces gamete nor secretes any sex hormone so primary reproductive organ or primary sex organ are called gonads gonads like in case of males it is testes and in case of female it is ovary whereas the secondary reproductive organ like in case of male like vas deferens we'll see vas deferens then in case of male there is uh, epididymis so all this uh, structure are secondary uh, reproductive organ so this are the secondary reproductive organ in males like in case of female the secondary reproductive organ like fallopian tube and uterus so fallopian tube uterus so these are secondary reproductive organ in case of females there are other uh, parts as well so these organs are responsible for just the conduction of the gamete produced by the gonads and gonads secrete sex hormone gonads produces gametes okay so the differentiation is very clear what are primary sex organ and what are secondary uh, sex organs now fsh and lh the hormones that are releasing from pituitary gland those hormones works on gonad so that means the primary reproductive organ so fsh and lh works on gonad and stimulates gonad to secrete or to synthesize and then secrete the hormones the sex hormones so fsh and lh stimulates testis fsh and lh stimulates ovary so the plus sign here denotes stimulation so now testis will secrete testosterone and ovary will secrete estrogen and progesterone and this coordinated activity of hypothalamus then pituitary and then gonad is the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis so hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis 
this refers to the coordinated activity of hypothalamus then then pituitary and then gonad whether it is testis or it is ovary now we'll see this axis in details while studying the physiology of male reproductive system and the physiology of female reproductive system now what is hpa axis means hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis now in hpa axis what happens that hypothalamus secretes a hormone called crh corticotropin releasing hormone so hypothalamus secretes a hormone called corticotropin releasing hormone and this corticotropin releasing hormone stimulates so the plus sign here also stands for stimulation it stimulates pituitary gland and pituitary gland secretes adrenocorticotropin sorry adrenocorticotropic hormone so acth now acth stimulates adrenal cortex so that from adrenal cortex some sex steroids can be released or steroidal hormones so steroids or steroidal hormones are released from adrenal cortex whether it is glucocorticoid that is also a steroidal hormone whether it is mineralocorticoid or it is sex steroid so here this coordinated activity of hypothalamus pituitary gland and adrenal gland is called hpa axis so now the terms are clear what is hpa axis what is hp uh, g axis so now we know that these two axis are responsible for the onset of puberty so for the uh, onset of puberty both this axis plays an important role but in actual sense what actually starts this system to suddenly uh, increase their activity during this age of puberty why they uh, are not starting before or after we will see this in the slides later on so for now just focus that this hpg axis which is responsible for true puberty this axis remains functional starting from intrauterine life when the baby is not born yet then in that period of time also there is the functionality of this hpg axis so let's see this part that the development of the hpg axis begins during fetal development so when a baby is developing inside the uterus during that time this hpg axis starts functioning so let's see this in short during the first trimester means during the first 3 month of pregnancy gonadotropin releasing hormone neurons so g n r h neurons i have told about this uh, g n r h neurons in, in the earlier slides so what was yes i have seen that g n r h neurons are present in hypothalamus so so let's see what is it saying that the g n rh neuron during the first trimester means the first 3 month of uh, fetal life what happens it migrate from the olfactory area so these neurons are present in the olfactory area then it migrates to their permanent secretory region in the hypothalamus so the from the region where it secretes so it travels to, to that region during the first trimester and the pituitary gland differentiates into anterior lobe and posterior lobe so during that time only pituitary gland is also differentiating into two separate lobe anterior and posterior lobe now the gnrh neuronal migration stimulates a pulsatile release of gnrh so in the in that period in the first trimester first 3 month of pregnancy in that uh, fetus in that baby 
what is happening gnrh secretion starts so this is the first time in the life of that person gnrh secretion is going on and due to this gnrh secretion there is subsequent rise in the secretion of lh and fsh by the anterior pituitary gland and during that time anterior pituitary gland is also secreting lh and fsh what is the necessary of that fsh and lh we have to see that also okay so there are some connecting concepts here let's see that lh and fsh levels reach their peak by the middle of the second trimester so second trimester means second three month so first three month then fourth and in the fifth month so in the middle of the fifth month so in the middle of the second trimester when sex steroid production begins to rise there is a gnrh release inhibition so what happens that when this sex steroid hormone production begins so sex steroid hormone production how it begins it begins when lh and fsh stimulates gonad that means by the middle of the second trimester gonads have been developed completely so those gonads starts secreting sex steroid and those sex steroids the higher concentration of sex steroid provides negative feedback to the pituitary to the pituitary of that baby to the hypothalamus of that baby so due to that effect what happens that gnrh release is subsequently inhibited okay so by negative feedback mechanism so sex steroid now provides negative feedback to the hypothalamus so that hypothalamic hormones are not released anymore so this causes a decrease in lh and fsh levels as well so as there are less gnrh so there will be less and less lh and fsh so during the third trimester so at the uh, end of the intrauterine life in the uh, uh, seven eight and ninth month of intrauterine life gnrh secretion and gonadotropin level means fsh and lh all these are fully suppressed so during the third trimester gnrh as well as fsh as well as lh all the uh, secretion are fully suppressed due to this negative feedback by the high sex steroid level produced by the feto placental unit feto placental unit means placenta along with this fetus so this structure due to the high sex steroid production by this structure the gnrh level the fsh and lh level these levels are very much decreased during birth or during the delivery of the baby so you are clear that the hpg axis starts functioning from intrauterine life when the baby is not not the baby when the fetus is not even 3 month old then it continues and it reaches peak when it reaches peak it reaches peak in the second trimester so in the middle of the second trimester fsh lh gnrh the level will be in the very peak level then there will be high production of sex steroid that means when it is in the 7th 8th and 9th month of intrauterine development during that time due to high production of sex steroid what happens now the gnrh production is getting inhibited by the negative feedback mechanism so there will be less and less gnrh less and less fsh less and less lh so what is happening that just during the birth of any child there is low concentration of gonadotropins and gnrh but just after birth so let's see the whole timeline what is happening in this hpg axis so let's see first two things we need to know one is pulsatile secretion so what do we mean by pulsatile secretion then we need to know two other protein molecules called activin and inhibin so this two molecule activin and inhibin these are two closely related protein molecules we need to understand about this protein 
to completely understand how this HPG axis is working. So, pulsatile secretion, you will come across this term that GnRH is secreted in a pulsatile manner. So, what do we mean by pulsatile manner? So, let's see the diagram below. Here you can see that during childhood, say in case of girls up to 10 years of age, what happens that up to 10 years, the secretion of GnRH from the hypothalamus is following no specific pattern. It is just secreted in a very low level. So, very low level of GnRH secretion. And this is called pre-pubertal phase. So, childhood or as you can see in the slide, it is called pre-pubertal phase. But just after the puberty or after the changes in the secondary uh, sexual characters in body, there is secretion of GnRH. So, just during adolescence period, during adolescence period what happens? GnRH secretion is periodic. So, this is a regular periodic secretion. So, it's like pulse. So, as we can feel pulse in our hand. Similarly, there is uh, continuous at a regular interval there is secretion of GnRH. So, this is pulsatile secretion. So, this type of secretion, a regular secretion of hormones. Normally, this type of secretion can be seen in hormones or neurotransmitters. So, this regular secretion of hormone or neurotransmitter at a constant interval. This type of secretion is called pulsatile secretion. So, in our body, there are different uh, hormones which are secreted in this manner. Among them, one of the important hormone is GnRH. So, GnRH is always secreted in a pulsatile manner. But not always. So, sorry, that would be not always. During puberty, secretion of GnRH is in pulsatile manner. But during uh, childhood, during pre-pubertal phase, there is a low level of GnRH secretion, but that is not following any particular uh, manner here. So, this term we have understood. Now, another term, activin and inhibin. So, let's see what is activin and what is inhibin. Activin is a group, activin and inhibin is a group of protein complex. So, let's see activin is a protein. And this protein is produced in different organs in our body. So, it is not like that this protein is produced only in our pituitary or only in our gonads. So, this protein, this type of protein is produced in pituitary, then in our gonads, in placenta. So, this type of protein are produced in placenta as well. So, what is the role of this uh, protein and this uh, abundant type of protein? We can find that activin actually stimulates FSH secretion and synthesis. So, stimulates stimulation of FSH secretion. First, uh, let's see synthesis, then secretion. So, where, where it will stimulate the synthesis of FSH. So, in, in pituitary, it uh, stimulates, this activin stimulates wound regeneration. So, if there is any wound in our uh, skin, there will be too much expression of activin and this over expression of activin causes healing of the skin. So, regeneration, regeneration of epithelial tissue. So, this is also one of the role of activin and another role of activin is binding of FSH to the ovary. So, binding of FSH to ovarian follicle. So, in inside ovary, there is growth of follicle in response to FSH. That is why the name uh, follicle stimulating hormone. So, the name came from there only. So, the binding of FSH to ovary requires receptor in the ovarian cells and that receptor generation is synthesized or is stimulated by this actin. So, inside ovarian cell, 
or in the membrane of ovarian cell there will be receptor for FSH and that receptor generation is stimulated by activin and inhibin is the opposite of activin so same type of protein but inhibin acting opposite to activin so what is the role of inhibin then let's see so inhibin inhibits fsh production but inhibin uh, there is a common misconception that inhibin can inhibit uh, hypothalamus but inhibin is not inhibiting hypothalamus uh, secretion so you need to understand that inhibin does not inhibit secretion of GnRH okay so inhibin is also are uh, secreted by the gonads so inhibin is secreted by the testes inhibin is secreted by ovary so we can observe that the hypothalamic neuron or the neuron that is responsible for starting this HPG axis that is the GnRH neuron these neurons are under regulation of several factors which controls the timing or the onset of puberty so when this puberty will start this is controlled by different neurotransmitters because as GnRH neuron is just a neuron and neurons are under the regulation or control of another neuron because another neuron will secrete a neurotransmitter and that neurotransmitter will regulate its activity so if you observe clearly then we can see that this hypothalamic neuron or which we are calling GnRH neuron it is under the regulation of several factors but among them the most important factor is the neurotransmitter of other neurons other non GnRH neurons in that hypothalamus so so neuronal secretion so from other neuron the neurotransmitters are coming and those neurotransmitters are regulating the GnRH uh, secretion from GnRH neuron then this GnRH will go on to pituitary and then pituitary will secrete this FSH and LH so now we can understand that all the thing lies in our brain so it starts from the brain so when our brain can sense that our body has enough energy storage for high rate of growth which occurs mainly in the adolescent period after which a boy or girl becomes capable of performing sexual reproduction and a girl specially become capable of carrying a child so our brain decides that when the body is capable of undergoing high rate of growth so when that body has enough energy storage so it is something related to fat it is something related to adipose tissue so when our body is having enough adipose tissue for performing this high rate of growth in different organs then there will be some signal that will control this GnRH neurons present in the hypothalamus now what is that specific molecule from adipose tissue or what are the specific neurotransmitters that inhibits GnRH neuron or that excites this GnRH neuron I'll discuss that in the next slide but before going through that slide let's just observe one other thing that is the changes in hormonal level changes in the gonadal hormones as well as uh, pituitary hormones during childhood during infancy during neonatal stage so let's see this slide so it is having too much information just you have to note it down or just uh, try to listen what I am saying here you can see in the first week of life in the first week that means that the baby is in neonatal stage in the neonatal stage LH and FSH level again rises in pulsatile fashion in response to fall in serum phytoplacental estrogen or testosterone level so phytoplacental estrogen level as this level is falling after the delivery so up to delivery of the baby there was decreased level of FSH, LH and GnRH 
but just after the delivery due to the decrease in the phytoplacental estrogen so the placental estrogen decreased and this decrease in estrogen level again provided positive feedback to the hypothalamic pituitary axis so what will happen LH and FSH quickly again reaches pubertal level so the level of FSH and LH that can be seen during puberty that level can be seen in neonatal stage so this is also called mini puberty just after the first week of birth so in that week what will happen due to increased FSH and LH now again the gonadal hormones gonadal sex hormones that is uh, for males testosterone for females estrogen so this will again increase so this now the increase of gonadal sex hormone will continue for one two month now what will happen by fourth month of life there will be increased sensitivity of the hypothalamic sex steroid receptor so now the hypothalamic steroid receptor so the hypothalamic neurons can uh, sense the high level of steroid so by the fourth month of life the increased sensitivity of hypothalamic steroid receptor lead to again decrease in LH FSH and GnRH level so there will be decrease in the GnRH FSH and LH level and that level will come to the pre pubertal level so normally if a, a boy or girl of seven year old in, in that boy or girl the amount of hormone what we will find in the blood so that is the pre pubertal level hormone so by fourth month after birth what happens that the level of this gonadal hormone and the level of FSH, LH and uh, GnRH will come to the pre pubertal level and in that level this will continue for the next 8 to 9 years so this increased sensitivity to negative feedback accounts for the inhibitory effect of estrogen testosterone throughout childhood so throughout the childhood this level of estrogen in girls and this level of testosterone in boys will thoroughly inhibit the hypothalamic pituitary axis let's come to the third point here so we have seen neonatal stage now we have seen infantal stage so infant so up to six months we are calling the babies infant and just after birth one two three week that is neonatal stage so we have seen what are the levels in neonatal stage and what are the levels in infantile stage now what are the levels of hormones in childhood period so let's see that the HPG axis remains relatively quiescent quiescent means here inactive so it remains relatively inactive throughout childhood FSH remains higher comparative to LH so throughout childhood FSH level will be slightly higher comparative to LH due to we know activin so due to activin so FSH level here are reflection of GnRH secretion as well as the relatively higher concentration of activin so activin is constantly helping more and more GnRH secretion and GnRH is helping more and more FSH secretion and there will be lower level of the counter protein what was the counter protein of activin that was inhibin so there will be lower concentration of inhibin and higher concentration of activin throughout throughout the childhood period so there will be a slight higher concentration of FSH throughout childhood but the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis is constantly inhibited and that axis is in quiescent stage as we can see and again between 7 and 10 years of age this GnRH level again begin to rise in pulsatile manner and there is subsequent increase in gonadotropin gonadotropin means FSH and LH so this level will rise again representing the advancement of puberty so the child is advancing towards puberty now here a question may arise in your mind that why in the point 3 which I have discussed 
that in spite of having a some level of FSH secretion, the HPG axis is inactive. So this is mainly due to insensitive FSH receptors in the gonads. So if the gonads are having a receptor and the receptor is not at all or not that much sensitive to FSH, then gonad will not secrete their hormone in response to FSH. So that axis will be interrupted. So as we have understood what are the levels of hormones uh, during neonatal, infantile and childhood stages. Let's move to that slide where we can observe that which neurotransmitters are regulating this GnRH neuron during pre-pubertal stage and during pubertal stage. So let's see this uh, slide here. These are called upstream regulators. Now upstream regulators, so there are some excitatory neurons. Uh, so there are some excitatory neurons that will be secreting some neurotransmitters which will further stimulate GnRH neuron and then GnRH neurons will secrete GnRH and then there will be pulsatile release of GnRH. So there are some neurons which are excitatory and the neurotransmitters related to those excitatory neurons are mainly these two. So one of the most important neurotransmitter for the starting of HPG axis and the question which we have discussed at the start of the lecture. So for the onset of puberty one of the most important neurotransmitter is Kispeptin. This neurotransmitter is secreted by some neurons and those neurons will be called Kispeptin neurons. Similarly, GLU stands for glutamate. So glutamate and Kispeptin, these are excitatory neurotransmitters. Whereas the GABA, gamma amino butyric acid, so gamma amino butyric acid, acid and pre-proencephaline so pre-proencephaline so this is or these neurotransmitters are responsible for inhibition of GnRH neurons during pre-pubertal period so we are clear which neurons or which type of neurons are actually stimulating this GnRH neurons and which type of neurons are actually inhibiting this uh, GnRH neurons so when the balance is shifted towards excitatory neurons then there will be more pulsatile release so then there will be more pulsatile release and we'll call this pubertal changes in GnRH uh, secreting neurons whereas when there are more inhibitory action on the GnRH neurons then there will be less pulsatile release and these are uh, what we can see in pre-pubertal period and there are many other factors like the nutritional status of the child as well as the exposure to some environmental chemicals some pesticides which are constantly entering into our body through our food intake so those factors also regulates the kispeptin releasing neurons so those uh, factors can regulate the kispeptin releasing re neurons and further that kispeptin releasing neuron will regulate the GnRH neuron so in that way uh, our reproductive cycle can be uh, regulated by some other uh, environmental factors as well that I'll come after two or three slide but before that let's see that what are the changes we'll see after the childhood so we have seen uh, neonatal changes we have seen infantile changes we have seen childhood changes then after the childhood period then the person is moving towards adolescence period so in the adolescence period what will happen let's see so in adolescence period there is changes in hormone secretion and 
changes in hormone secretion occur approximately one year before the physical signs of puberty become uh, evident. So, before the pubertal signs are very much evident, some uh, changes in the body already appears. So, these hormonal changes begin with increasing frequency and amplitude of pulsatile GnRH. So, pulsatile GnRH, so you can understand that first there were pulsatile GnRH, but there were very less frequent pulsation we can observe. But with time there is very high secretion and more number. So, this is increase in frequency and this is increase in the amplitude of GnRH secretion during adolescence period. So, here you can also observe that this GnRH secretion first occurs at night and then progressively throughout the day. So, the associated rise in LH and FSH, so whenever there is GnRH rise, there will be obviously uh, LH and FSH rise, so as these are uh, gonadotropines. But what we have seen during childhood, during childhood, what was there that FSH concentration was more than LH in the blood. But during adolescence period, what will happen that LH rises higher than FSH during this puberty and during this period of adolescence. So, why this happens? Because the cells of pituitary which are secreting LH and FSH, what happens that pituitary cells are more sensitive to so the pituitary cells secreting LH are more sensitive towards GnRH. So, due to increased sensitivity to GnRH stimulation, LH secretion uh, increases more than FSH. So, then there will be different growth in case of testes, there will be more and more testosterone release and in case of ovary, there will be more and more estrogen secretion. So, Let's see what are the physical signs of puberty. So, what are the signs that you can also find in your uh, NCRT as well. That what are the signs of puberty. So, let's see that there is something called pubertal staging. And it is also called sexual maturity rating or SMR. So, on what basis these ratings are done, we'll see this in the next slide only. But first, let's see that this changes of uh, puberty are very much variable among individuals and among races. We have seen that in girls it is mean 10 year and in uh, boys it is mean in the 12th year, the starting of puberty. So, in the males uh, something we can observe which are uh, testicular enlargement. So, uh, enlargement of the testes and there is Penile enlargement, so enlargement of penis, then there is height growth spurt, so there is sudden increase in the height of the child and there is pubic hair and axillary hair increase. So, on those basis the staging of puberty is done. So, we will see what is that staging. That staging is also called tenor staging. So, in case of uh, females, we need to see uh, the development of breast, so thalarchy, so this is called thalarchy. I will come to those terms. Then height growth spurt, which was also evident in uh, males. Then pubic hair development, so there are different stages of pubic hair formation. And the first uh, bleeding phase and which we call uh, menarche, the starting of menstrual cycle. So, let's see some terms related uh, to puberty. So, let's see these terms. I think you can observe, you can see those terms clearly. So, thalark, what is thalark? Thalark means the onset of breast development. So, thalark means the onset of breast development. Whereas, adrenarch means increase in production of androgen by adrenal cortex. So, 
the main important hormone is DHES and it is also called dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate as you can see at last the name is given so dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate so this is the main uh, hormone that is uh, releasing from adrenal cortex the adrenal sex hormone this is so the increase in the production of adrenal sex hormone or mainly androgens this is called adrenarchy then what is menarche menarche means the onset of a menstrual cycle and what is puberty so this is the appearance of pubic hair and the appearance of pubic hair is mainly due to uh, adrenarchy not due to uh, the the gnrh and more gonadal sex hormone so the appearance of pubic hair is mainly due to adrenal sex hormones okay so this is a response to adrenal androgen then gonadarchy what is that the activation of the gonads whether it is ovary or it is testes by the pituitary hormone so this is called gonadarchy and similarly gonadotropins we know that the hormone which can act on gonads are called gonadotropins so fsh and lh these are the two hormone which act on gonad no other hormone is acting on gonad and the sex steroids so androgen and estrogen these are the steroidal hormones and we call it sex steroid now there are different names of androgens like we have already seen dhea so dehydro ep androsterone sulfate and if there is uh, s then we'll call it sulfate otherwise these are the names dhea and androstenedione and testosterone and dht dihydrotestosterone so these are the different names of androgens so this slide is very much important for uh, noting down some facts so now let's go back to our slide where we have seen on what basis uh, the sexual maturity rating is done or staging of puberty is done in case of males the staging of puberty whether puberty is progressing properly or not it is done by observing testicular enlargement by observing penile enlargement by observing the height growth and by observing pubic hair development in case of females uh, we cannot observe the ovarian development so it is mainly observed on the basis of a uh, breast development and then height changes in the height and then again pubic hair development and the onset of menstrual cycle now this uh, sexual maturity rating is also called tenor stage this is also called tenor stage so on what basis this uh, tenor staging is done so let's see so this is a rating scale describing secondary sexual characteristic so smr is a rating scale or standard rating scale throughout the world uh, for uh, any uh, physician to describe secondary sexual characteristic it does not always correlate with chronological age but it is mainly based on pubic hair development it is for both males and females breast development for females and testicular and penile development so testis development and penis development for males so on those basis this staging is done what is the use of such type of uh, staging so the objective measure to follow progression of development so whether puberty is developing and whether uh, the sexual development is occurring or not like in case of autistic disease we can find the patient in the patient uh, the sexual maturity is not occurring at a normal rate and it is easily uh, it easily describes the stage of development to uh, different providers so this is a clinical method used by health professionals uh, by doctors nurses or paramedicals irrespective of any region now the question is what do we mean by secondary sexual characters so what is this 
secondary asexual character so first we need to know that secondary sexual characters uh, play no role in reproduction in sexual reproduction so secondary sexual characters have no role in sexual reproduction but these are the result of the activity of sex hormone in the body so secondary sexual characters so let's see secondary sexual characters are external features that provides distinctiveness okay so secondary sexual characters are external features external features that provides distinctiveness to the two sexes so we can just uh, uh, say that this is male this is female only uh, by observing this secondary sexual characters so whether it is male or female we can just say by observing the secondary sexual characters so this gives us something called sexual dimorphism so what is sexual dimorphism let's see so there is another term sexual dimorphism so sexual dimorphism means the phenomenon by which male and female of same species is differentiated externally this is called sexual dimorphism but if you find one animal in which you cannot say which one is male which one is female just by observing the animal then that means that animal is having no secondary sexual characters so secondary sexual character is responsible for sexual dimorphism what is sexual dimorphism the phenomenon by which male and female of the same species so male and female individuals of a species are differentiated okay so sexual dimorphism is the result of secondary sexual characters and secondary sexual characters are the result of gonadal sex hormone so you must be very clear that gonadal sex hormone if induces a phenomenal change in the body then there will be differentiation in the body there will be external morphological differentiation and due to that we are calling it these are secondary sexual characters and due to this secondary sexual character we can observe dimorphism so two different morphology of the individuals of same species so dimorphism okay now let's write some of the important or major secondary sexual characters of human male and human female so uh, let's see so for human male some of the major secondary sexual characters which we can observe are facial hair then body hair then more muscular development more muscle or more not the number of muscle obviously the bulk of the muscle is more now low pitched voice so low pitched voice is mainly due to larger larynx so larynx is larger in case of male so this is also one of the secondary sexual character so larger larynx and inside larynx larynx is the voice box inside larynx there is vocal cord so males are having longer vocal cord larger larynx and it is having longer and thicker longer and thicker vocal cord then one of the secondary sexual characters in male is also narrow pelvis so if you compare the pelvis region so we are having chest then abdomen then pelvis the pelvis region in case of male is uh, narrower than uh, females so narrow pelvis and the broadening of shoulder this is also one of the important secondary sexual character in male in case of female there are some secondary sexual characters like less facial hair less body hair uh, less bulk or less bulkiness of the muscle let's see the secondary sexual characters in female 
तो मेजर सेकेंडरी सेक्शुअल कैरेक्टर्स इन फीमेल इज वी हैव सीन थेलार्क दैट इज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ ब्रेस्ट देन ब्रॉडर पेल्विस more fat deposition in the mammary gland more fat deposition in the thigh so fat deposition in some specific region of the body and a uh, high pitched voice high pitched voice high pitched voice is mainly due to small or smaller larynx and as the larynx is smaller so the vocal cord inside that larynx will also be uh, of shorter length and due to that shorter and thinner vocal cord the pitch of the voice is higher so these are the some secondary sexual characters in female or major secondary sexual characters and in males so in both the cases hormones you can see here hormones trigger this uh, external and internal changes puberty uh, starts we have seen only so there is a variation in the starting of puberty so in girls 8 to 10 but the main thing here we have seen that just before puberty and uh, during this adolescent period everyone gets a growth spurt so there is a increase in the rate of body growth so peak of growth in case of girls the growth peak occurs at the age of 12 in case of boys the peak occurs uh, in the age of 14 so whether boy or girl there is fatty tissue so in case of boys there there would be a less fatty tissue because there will be breaking of fat so in case of boys boys lose the fat or fatty tissue as they grow whereas girls grow into body fatty tissue so there will be more and more fatty tissue accumulation and in case of boys due to high level of testosterone so due to high testosterone level testosterone has some function like muscle growth cell growth and development so testosterone is responsible for uh, the bulkiness of the muscle that's why testosterone is also sometimes used by bodybuilders to develop muscles in a short span of time so as this is a uh, this is an anabolic steroid so testosterone is a anabolic steroid it grows the muscle but there is other side effects of testosterone as well testosterone is also responsible for falling of hair so hair fall so the male pattern baldness hair fall is also due to this uh, dihydrotestosterone now let's try to reconnect all the concepts that we have studied in the last one hour to understand the regulation of the onset of puberty it means the age when the puberty starts it differs from region to region from continent to continent from the last century to this century so what are the factors which are regulating this change in the onset so let's study this thing now so the regulation of puberty and the stimulus for the onset of puberty is multifactorial so first we need to know that there is not a single factor controlling this onset of puberty so although genetic factors contribute to 75% of the variability of pubertal timing depends on the uh, genetics of our body that how the protein synthesis will occur when some genes will switch on and some genes will switch off so depending on the genetics of the body but it is also important to note that other factors like neuroendocrine hormones so if there are some problem like tumor in the pituitary glands or in the adrenal glands so if there are some problem in the neuro endocrine hormone secretion then there will be different uh, rate or different timing of onset of puberty then ethnicity as i have said already that in asia the timing of puberty for the children would be different than america then endocrine disrupting chemicals so these are something we need to understand that endocrine disrupting chemicals so nowadays what we eat it is having so many preservatives and in so much preservatives there are some chemicals which can act as hormone inside our body so these chemicals are called hormonally active chemical and and nutrition 
Last three factors will be more concerned with endocrine disrupting chemicals, nutrition and adipose tissue. These factors will uh, try to understand. So the regulation of puberty is controlled by so many factors. Genetic factors are the most uh, important factors but apart from genetic factors there are some other factors like endocrine disrupting chemicals, nutritional status of that person and the adipose tissue or the fat content in that person. So all these play an important role in the uh, rate of pubertal progression. So let's understand something here that pulsatile release of GnRH from the hypothalamus is controlled by balance between central nervous system, excitatory and inhibitory signals we have already seen. We have seen that kiss peptin was a, a neurotransmitter which was stimulatory to GnRH neuron. And there was some inhibitory signals as well like GABA releasing neurons. So there is a balance between excitatory neurotransmitters and inhibitory neurotransmitters. So that balance progressively shifts in a particular direction. So what happens that during a childhood the major inhibitory system preventing GnRH release are gamma aminobutyric acid. So GABA, GABA secreting this GABA secreting uh, neurons are actually inhibiting the GnRH neuron as well as some neurons called opiodergic neurons. So GABAergic neurons and opiodergic neurons, these two type of neurons were inhibitory to GnRH neuron during childhood. But as the child proceeds towards a pubertal age, what happens that excitatory system stimulating GnRH release include neuronal kispeptin, glutamate as well as glial cells. So there are some neuroglia. So there are some cells other than neurons in our brain which we call neuroglia. So there are some glial cells which also secretes growth factors or some protein that uh, stimulate GnRH neuron to secrete more and more GnRH. So the growth of GnRH neuron occurs under the influence of those uh, glial cells. So let's understand the whole concept. Uh, in a diagrammatic way how these GnRH neurons are affected by so many factors. So let's see this diagram here that this, this is the GnRH neuron. Now this GnRH neuron is under the action of two different uh, kiss peptin releasing neuron. So this is one kiss peptin releasing neuron, this is another kiss peptin releasing neuron. But these two kispeptin releasing neuron are of different type. One of the kispeptin releasing neuron we are calling it KNDY neuron. Just in the next slide I will see what is KNDY neuron. And another kispeptin neuron is AVPV neuron. Both of these neurons are releasing kispeptin as I have uh, shown here. So this is also releasing kispeptin and this is also releasing Kispeptin. From both this neuron, kispeptin is actually stimulating GnRH neuron to secrete GnRH. But there are some other regulation. Like if there is high concentration of testosterone, if there is high concentration of estrogen, then what will happen? Then this neuron, this KNDY neuron, I am coming to that what is KNDY neuron. This neuron is inhibited and this neuron will now not secrete any kiss peptin. So under the action of sex steroid like testosterone estrogen, some kiss peptin releasing neurons are not secreting kiss peptin anymore. How this regulation is done? This regulation is done by dynorphine, a chemical. So let's come to this. So first understand what is AVPV, what is KND neuron. So let's see here. What is AVPV? Hypothalamus is composed of many different nuclei. What is nuclei? Nuclei means discrete. So nuclei means discrete masses of gray matter. We know gray matter collection of 
neurons collection of cell bodies of the neuron so many different uh, or discrete masses of gray matter in the central nervous system is called nuclei so hypothalamus is consisting of many different nuclei so in hypothalamus different hormones are synthesized in different nuclei okay so one such example is anteroventral periventricular nucleus so what i am saying that hypothalamus so hypothalamus say this is pituitary and that part is hypothalamus hypothalamus of our brain is consisting of many uh, masses masses of gray matter so what we have seen that discrete masses of gray matter so discrete masses of gray matter so this discrete masses of gray matter so here there are some uh, cell bodies collection of cell bodies here some other collection of cell bodies so these are some nucleus or we can call nuclei of hypothalamus these nuclei are given different different names among them two name is one of the name is avpv and it is called anteroventral periventricular nucleus and another example is arcuate nucleus arcuate nucleus these two example are important regarding our gnrh secretion because here what i told that some kiss peptin releasing neurons are in avpv or anteroventral periventricular nucleus and some kiss peptin releasing neuron which i have named k and d y neuron it is present in arc or it is called arcuate nucleus now let's understand what is this k and d y neuron so this k and d y neuron stands for the name stands for k stands for kiss peptin n stands for neurokinin b and d y stands for dynorphin so this is a neuron which can secrete three different chemicals three different types of chemicals one is kiss peptin another is neurokinin b another is dynorphin so these neurons are called k and d y neuron so this type of neuron is present in hypothalamus so this is present in hypothalamus and these neurons are central to the hormonal control of reproduction so for the control of gnrh neuron this type of neurons which was discovered in just in 2007 this type of neurons have very important role so they are involved in the negative feedback negative feedback mechanism of gnrh so so this uh, k and d y neurons kiss peptin neurokinin b and dynorphin releasing neurons are very important for the regulation of puberty now let's understand the concept here we have seen that this is say this is my gnrh neuron and now this gnrh neuron is under the control of k and d y neuron and this is also under the control of other kiss peptin neuron which is from the nucleus avpv avpv means uh, anteroventral paraventricular uh, neuron so so the neurons which are present in uh, this Uh, this nucleus a v p v nucleus and this k n d y neurons are present in uh, arcuate nucleus now k n d y neuron and uh, the neurons from a v p v both are secreting uh, kiss peptin for the regulation of g n r h so that g n r h can g n r h neuron can secrete g n r h into the blood circulation but what we have also seen that the neurons present in avpv these neurons are also regulated these neurons are also under positive regulation of some chemical called leptin so this chemical leptin so leptin is one of the important chemical and it is secreted by adipose tissue fat so in our body from the fat some chemicals are released and these chemicals are called leptin leptin 
positively stimulates this kiss peptin releasing neuron and now kiss peptin will be released and now kiss peptin will stimulate gnrh neuron and now what will happen gnrh will be released so you can understand the uh, connection between fat and uh, reproduction so if there are more fat content in our body there will be more leptin content and then there will be more uh, gnrh secretion whereas this KNDY neurons, these neurons are under regulation of uh, autocrine signaling. So what happens, this, this is one kind of neuron, it can secrete three different chemical, three different chemical, one is kispeptin, another is neurokinin B, another is dynorphin. But what happens, this neurokinin and dynorphin both acts in an autocrine manner. What is autocrine? Means the chemical secreted by the cell acts on the cell itself. So, dy, it will act on the cell itself. Similarly, this uh, neurokinin B, it will act on the cell itself. That means when the cell secretes dynorphin, dynorphin then provides negative stimulus so that no more kiss peptin will be released. But if the cell secretes neurokinin, then it provides positive stimulus so that kiss peptin will be released. So neurokinin causes KNDY neuron to secrete this kiss peptin. And dynorphin causes this KNDY neuron to not release kiss peptin. That means what? The cell here itself is working in an autoregulatory manner. Okay, and here we have seen the contribution of fat as well. There is another hormone which I have shown in the last diagram. So, in the last diagram, you can see there is another hormone called ghrelin. Ghrelin. This hormone is secreted by stomach. So, a hormone secreted by stomach, it causes negative feedback and the uh, kiss peptin releasing neuron will now not release any kiss peptin so that GnRH neuron will not work. So, there is a complexity, complex circuit developed in the hypothalamus that is regulating this uh, reproductive behavior, this pubertal changes in our body. So, this leptin and ghrelin, this two uh, thing is associated with nutritional status of that person. So, this two thing is associated with nutritional status. So, nutritional status of the person determines the amount of ghrelin secreted by stomach and the amount of leptin secreted by stomach. See the diagram now and try to uh, connect this concept. Here you can see that ghrelin is produced by the cells of GIT before eating. So if you are hungry, if you are not able to eat properly, like in the 19th century, the human development index was very low. So, before eating normally our body is secreting more and more ghrelin and less leptin. There will be less leptin and more ghrelin. That is why you can see in the fulcrum towards ghrelin there is more weight. So, it will be hunger. But you, if your uh, stomach and if your uh, intestine is full of food, then what will happen? then there will be more amount of leptin. So, leptin is made uh, by the adipose cells, by our fat cells. So, if uh, our stomach is full of food, then there will be less ghrelin and more leptin. And what I have seen, that leptin, if there is more leptin, then it stimulates, it provides positive stimulus so that more GnRH will be released, more GnRH will be released. But if there is more, if the person is more hungry 
and uh, that person is not getting food then then his or her reproductive uh, behavior will also be suppressed so if there is more ghrelin it provides negative stimulus for the release of gnrh so there will be less gnrh so this is how the nutritional status of our body is actually regulating the gnrh secretion from hypothalamus now as i have told already here you can see that gnrh pulse regulation that the secretion of gnrh is mainly controlled by k and d neurons this k and d y neurons so k and d y neurons control gnrh pulse secretion by release of three uh, peptide neurotransmitter one is uh, neurokinin b another is dynorphin another is kispeptin then we have seen that nkb or neurokinin b and dynorphin are two peptides that regulate the secretion of kispeptin so kispeptin is the main neurotransmitter here but the secretion of kispeptin is regulated by uh, nkb neurokinin b and dynorphin i already told this in the previous slide now you know that nkb is the stimulating peptide means if if the k and d y neuron secretes nkb then what will happen nkb will in turn stimulate this neuron so that what will happen so that this neuron secretes kispeptin but if uh, dynorphin is released so in the last stanza you can see if dynorphin is released then it acts on some receptor called kappa opoid receptors if th these receptors are called kor kappa opoid receptors so these receptors inhibit kispeptin secretion there will be no kispeptin secretion and there will be less and less gnrh secretion so there will be less gnrh secretion so this is the concept how our gnrh secretion or how the gnrh pulse is regulated in the hypothalamus so now we know that how the fat of the body how the nutritional status of the body can regulate gnrh pulsatile secretion from hypothalamus but another concept is uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals those chemicals are also interfering with our normal gnrh pulse so endocrine chemicals endocrine disrupting chemicals these chemicals provide positive stimulus to the hypothalamic neurons so sometimes some chemicals like ddt ddt was more prevalent in the uh, 20th century so this pesticide which entered into human through food chain this can disrupt normal release of glutamate we know that glutamate and kispeptin these two are stimulatory uh, neurotransmitter for gnrh neurons so if some chemicals uh, enters into our body from the food we take and it uh, interrupts our normal body mechanism and some glutamate secreting neurons are activating and those glutamate are stimulating the gnrh neuron and then gnrh neuron uh, is secreting gnrh so there will be very uh, high chance of early puberty so high chance of early puberty so all these factors so if i take all these factors in a single diagram so let's draw the last diagram to consider all the factors just now we have seen to finally understand the topic as a whole so there are gnrh neuron and there are k and d y neuron and there are other kispeptin releasing neuron which are present in the which are present in the nucleus of hypothalamus called uh, avpv avpv nucleus of hypothalamus k and d y neurons are present in the arc nucleus of hypothalamus now k and d y neuron secretes neurokinin b 
So if the K N D Y neuron secretes neurokinin B, then neurokinin B in turn stimulates in turn stimulates K N D Y neuron so that K N D Y neuron can secrete his peptin. Similarly, if this K N D Y neuron if this K N D Y neuron secretes dynorphin, then dynorphin in turn inhibits K N D Y neuron. So K N D Y neuron will not secrete his peptin. And some other kiss peptin neuron from AVPV, they are also secreting kiss peptin. And this kiss peptin is stimulating, this kiss peptin is stimulating GNRH neuron so that GNRH neuron secretes GNRH. But we have seen that fat, if, if we are full of food, then the fat content, from fat content there is secretion of leptin, a hormone and this leptin can also stimulate kiss peptin neuron of AVPV so that it further stimulate a GNRH neuron then there is release of GNRH. But if the person is uh, totally hungry, if the person is in fasting state then what happens then ghrelin is secreted ghrelin is secreted from stomach so ghrelin secreted from stomach what it what it does this ghrelin is providing negative stimulus so it is inhibiting kiss peptin neuron so there will be less gnrh secretion and then what i have seen that ed ed means endocrine disrupting chemicals like uh, DDT. Endocrine disrupting chemicals can stimulate can stimulate neurons of hypothalamus which can secrete glutamate. So, so ED stimulates glutamate secreting neurons and this glutamate secreting neurons now releases glutamate and glutamate in turn stimulates GnRH neuron so there will be more and more GnRH. So here in this diagram all the factors are in one place so you can easily understand how the GnRH secretion is regulated in our hypothalamus from all those uh, factors and the first question which we have seen that the early puberty and why uh, the children of this century are growing up faster and it is mainly due to improved nutrition. So here you can see one of the uh, diagram from a journal and here you can see that improved nutrition as well as more exposure to more exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals. So EDC more exposure to in endocrine disrupting chemicals as well as more or increased prevalence of obesity increased pre prevalence of obesity in the children all this leads to the early puberty in today's generation